one of us to, I mean, uh, uh, gather together in this, uh, I mean, Zoom uh, platform and uh, have uh, uh, this meeting and praising the name of the Lord. So God, may God bless you all this morning uh, through uh, listening to the word of God. And uh, we have a, a, a man of God, uh, Pastor Finney Kurivala uh, from uh, Kerala. And he is the guest speaker of today's I mean, uh, worship service. And uh, I'm so glad to uh, introduce him and also to welcome uh, Pastor Finney Kurivala in our midst this morning to share the word of God. I mean, so, I mean, uh, that uh, the pastor and family, they were in uh, North India for, uh, for a long uh, time. And uh, 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 now he is ministering with the uh, uh, New India Church of God. And also uh, he is the Sunday School uh, Director of uh, uh, I mean, uh, New India Church of God. And, uh, you know, I came to know that I'm also he, he's, a, he's the teacher of uh, India Bible College and Seminary, Kumbana. And uh, uh, moreover, he is married uh, with uh, uh, Sister Shemal and blessed with the two children. I mean, so uh, we are so glad that you are with us this morning. And uh, we know that it's, it's too late for you uh, there in India. But uh, I mean, uh, we thank you for joining with us. And uh, we, are, we are so happy that you are, we, you are having with us and this morning. And uh, uh, may God bless you. And uh, as we are sitting in the presence of God uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with a prayerful attitude to listen to the word of God and to receive the, the, the counsel of God. And I request to everyone to be I mean, seated in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude. And uh, let us all put our hands together and uh, welcome Pastor Fini Kuribula in our first this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to be with you all in this morning in the Zoom platform. Though I don't know anyone uh, among you, uh, through one of my friends, uh, uh, Mr. Jimmy Thomas, introduced myself to Pastor Sankuti. And uh, uh, two, three days ago, Pastor Sankuti, uh, we had a talk uh, through the phone. And uh, he asked me to uh, join today and uh, share from God's word. So I'm here in the midst of you. Thank you so much for, uh, 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 you know, giving me this opportunity to share from God's word uh, in this morning. So without uh, uh, taking much time, so shall we go to the word? So please open with me to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 7 to 9 and uh, 14 to 18. Uh, Apostle Paul's letter to Second uh, Corinthians, uh, chapter uh, chapter four, verse uh, seven to nine, and uh, fourteen to eighteen. So let me uh, read this uh, verse for you. Uh, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not in, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Verse uh, uh, 14 onwards. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with, with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more People may cause thanksgiving to our flow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, and inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is seen what is unseen is eternal. And this is uh, one of the uh, wonderful letters that Apostle Paul uh, wrote to the believers at uh, uh, Corinth. Uh, before we go into this, uh, in the context of this letter, uh, let me share uh, a, a kind of a background to this, uh, uh, this letter. You know, the Christian hope is, uh, which the Bible teaches is very unique in this world. This Christian hope is the basis of Christianity and the motivation factor that helped a Christian to move forward. What really sustains uh, each one of us 
when we face these difficulties and struggles in our lives. What sustains the Christians down through the centuries, from uh, many centuries, they faced all those struggles in their lives. What was the motivating factor behind them to push forward and move into, the, into their Christian lives? You know, we ourselves, last seven, eight months around the world, we all are afflicted because of a pandemic situation that arose in this world. And what that is helping us to move forward. There are uh, many things are there that may, allow, that may uh, put us down, but what that is uh, helping us to move forward. So therefore, in this, uh, uh, in this morning, I would like to speak on a theme, Christian hope in the midst of affliction. Christian hope in the midst of affliction. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, uh, one onwards, particularly Apostle Paul says that, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have this ministry uh, because of the mercy of God, so we do not lose heart. And in the same chapter, uh, 4 verse 16, again Apostle Paul is saying that, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So in this uh, morning, we will be uh, uh, together looking into uh, this uh, passage or this theme, Christian hope in the midst of affliction. There are many things that, uh, uh, that pull us down when we face all these struggles in our lives. And now Apostle Paul is uh, encouraging the believers at the Corinth that we do not lose heart because we have this ministry because of the grace of God. We do not lose heart. When Apostle Paul uh, wrote this letter to Corinthians, during his uh, second missionary journey, uh, Paul uh, started or planted this church at Corinth. At the last part of his uh, uh, second missionary journey, around 18 months he stayed in the city of Corinth and established this church. The church at Corinth is the work of hard work of his. Uh, uh, the result of his hard work. When Apostle Paul heard about the issues that was there in the church at Corinth, he wrote a very powerful letter, and that is the first letter to Corinthians that we have in our Bible. And in the second letter to Corinthians, Paul is writing to the Corinthians as a response to the accusations they made against him. They accused him as a weak and afflicted person and even doubted his apostleship. In this uh, context, Apostle Paul was trying to explain the paradoxical nature of Christianity and defending his apostleship. No person was ever aware of the paradoxical nature of Christianity than Apostle Paul. And perhaps none of his epistles contain more paradoxes than 2 Corinthians. In verse 7, as we read, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Here, Paul uses a powerful metaphor in which he compares human life with the jars of clay. So Paul presents uh, the life with the jars of clay. You know, according to uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse 17, soon after his conversion in the Damascus door experience, the Christians or the people in Damascus did not ac accept Apostle Paul so Galatians chapter 1 verse 17 says that immediately he went up to Arabia. Probably, and this is one of the, the things that he might have seen in Arabia, what happened in the ancient Middle East. In the ancient Middle East and during that time, when a, a guest arrives in the town and he will be greeted with a particular parade. In that parade, the things that brought before that guest that who came into that, uh, that nation, they will bring all the, the precious jewels and metals of the royal person before the guest. Very interestingly, when this parade was, uh, uh, you know, when they bring these precious things, they will bring it in an earthen vessel. It is not 
put it in the golden vessel or silver vessel or any other uh, vessels. Rather, they bring all these precious things, the jewels and metals of the, the person or in that country, bring it in the, the earthen vessel. So it is uh, presenting something, something very important to us. What is, uh, the container is not important, but what is placed it in the, uh, uh, in the, the container is very important. You know, in that, uh, the reason for such a practice was to emphasize the importance of what was inside the containers as opposed to the container themselves. Probably seeing this custom, Paul brings out this metaphor to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. All surpassing power is from God and not from us. And uh, when we look into verse uh, 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 5 and 6, there it says that, 2nd Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, for we do not uh, preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as servants uh, for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness and made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. In other words, what Apostle Paul is preaching here is about the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, you know, uh, in verse 7, to show the surpassing power is from God and not from us. The power is in the treasure, not in the clay jar. God put the treasure in human containers like uh, Apostle Paul, and each one of us with a very great purpose to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not from us. The image of clay jar was used as a metaphor for human weakness in ancient writings. Even in the Qumran writings, the early Jewish writings and in Christian writing compared human life, human life with the fragile jars of clay. Our flow shows the flawless gospels we are the clay jars so that we are not stealing the glory away from God and his glorious gospel. We are to embrace our weakness so that the power of God can be made visible in our lives. Think about how God's power is on its greatest display when it transforms a weak, selfish, fragile, broken person into a godly, loving, Christ-believing Christian. Paul reminds us that the value is not us, we are just a clay jars. We are valuable in relation to the task and value given to us by God. When we promote ourselves as anything more than as a clay jar, we have taken away the attention from God. We must never draw attention to ourselves, but to God and the gospel. So let us look at the hope of a child of God in the midst of affliction. What that help a child of God in the midst of all the struggles and the affliction that we face in our lives? You know, in the red passage, the first thing that, that help a child of God in the midst of all this affliction is the power of God. The firstly, the hope of a Christian is the power of God, verse seven and nine. 79. And here in these verses, we see a series of four, four paradoxes. Series of four paradoxes. And uh, that is, the first one is, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Now, when you look into this uh, uh, parables, uh, sorry, the paradoxes, it says that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. The root meaning of the word hard pressed is to be excused like grapes for grape juice. And the root meaning of the word crushed is to be distressed. You know, when Apostle Paul is exhorting and encouraging the believers at Corinth because they are the result of his hard work of 18 months of labor in the city of Corinth. And now he's saying that this particular parable should to show it is the power of God that helps a child of God 
to help a minister to face all these struggles. The first paradox he said, uh, presented here is, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. It is almost like excusing the grape for getting the grape juice. We are pressed from all corners. We are pressed from all sides. But because of the, the power of God that is pressured in our clay jars, we are not crushed. Otherwise, there is all possibilities there for us to be crushed in the midst of all this affliction and the problem that we face in this world. Because the power of the glory of the gospel that is put it in this clay jar, and that is helping us not to be crushed. And the second paradox that we see here is perplexed but not in despair. The second paradox is, we are perplexed, but not in despair. The word perplexed means confused, and despair means hopeless. When you look into this particular uh, you know, the paradox, it says that many times in our lives, many times in our Christian journey, as we, as we move further, many times we are confused. As we go Go on our Christian journey, many times when we reach into some junctions, some corners of our lives, we are confused. We don't know what to do. Many times we are confused. What decision need to be taken? Which one is, which one is right? In which way I, I go, I will go. And sometimes we are, you know, even felt that we don't have any hope at all. We are in a hopeless situation. But even in the midst of all these situations, our hope floats over all those. Our hope is like a cork that fell into the sea. The huge waves come and toss this cork from one side to the other side. But this cork has one thing to say. You toss me from one side to the other, but I am made of a stuff that is unsinkable. That's what this Cork will say that. The hope of floats. It is like the, the cork that moving from one end to the other. The cork will say that you may toss me from one end to the other, but you can never, ever sink me down because I am made of a stuff that is unsinkable. My dear brethren, when we face hardship, when we face struggles, when we face difficulties in our lives, in our Christian journey, we need to remember that the Satan and all the pressures and all this world may try to put you down, but we are made of a stuff that is unsinkable. That is the glorious gospel of Christ that is put it in the jars of clay. We are perplexed, but not hopeless, because there's a stuff that sustains us. It is the power of God. Let's go to the next uh, uh, paradox. It says that, we are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. You know, here the root word uh, for persecuted is being hunted. And the word for abandoned means forsaken. When Apostle Paul uh, says about the persecution that he faced in his life, he probably explaining about the persecution that he faced during his first missionary journey. When we study Acts chapter 14, in the second part of Acts chapter 14, there we see about Apostle Paul's ministry in a city called Lystra. During his first missionary journey, Apostle Paul and Barnabas, they went into a place called Lystra, and they were sharing the word of God, a particular crippled man was looking into the face of Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul found that he has faith to be healed. Apostle Paul healed him in the name of Jesus Christ. So after seeing this miraculous thing that in the city of Lystra, people got amazed and they thought that human God came down in human form. And they made a great uproar in the city and they were trying to offer sacrifice before Apostle Paul and Barnabas. At the end of the story, you know, we, we know that Apostle Paul was beaten and stoned very badly, and they thought that he was killed. 
Apostle Paul knew the taste of persecution very well. Now, and after, you know, as we read further into Acts chapter 14, and Apostle Paul, you know, went away from that place, and he continued his ministry for a longer time, sharing the word of the Lord in Asia Minor. What we are understanding with this parable, we are persecuted, but not abandoned. Even in the second missionary journey, the same thing that happened to Apostle Paul. Because of the Macedonian call, he went to Philippi. And there, Apostle Paul faced the persecution. From Philippi to Berea, and Berea to Thessalonica, and Thessalonica to Athens, and Athens to Corinth. All these places, he was chased like a dog from one place to another. He knew the taste of persecution. He knew the taste of persecution. And now, Apostle Paul is saying that we are persecuted but not abandoned. And in the fourth paradox, it says that we are struck down but not destroyed. We are struck down but not destroyed. The phrase struck down but not destroyed may be better translated as knocked down but not knocked out. Many times, the situations and even Satan and many issues of our lives try to destroy us, but we are knocked down, but not knocked out. Now, if you throw a, a, a glass into the floor, it will break into pieces. But Apostle Paul is saying that many times Satan tried to push us down thrown into down, but we are not knocked out. It's only one reason, because the power of God is filled in the clay jars. It is the power of God that helps a minister in the midst of all these afflictions, in the midst of all these troubles. And that's what Apostle Paul is saying through these four paradoxes. We have this pressure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are not destroyed. We are not abandoned. It's not because of the ability that we have. It's not because of the, uh, the you know, any of our uh, merits. It's only because the glory of the gospel is presented in the jars of clay. Because of the this glory. This power of God is presented in our jars of clay. We are not destroyed. We are not abandoned. We are not fors uh, forsaken. We are not hopeless. Many times these situations may come in our lives. We may be hard pressed on from all sides. We may be excused many times. Many times we, are, we may think that, you know, too much pressure that comes to our lives. Almost like we are sitting in, inside of the pressure cookers. That much pressure that comes. But in the midst of all those struggles, in the midst of all those pressures, in the midst of all those difficult situations that face in our lives, the only thing that helps us to move further is because of the, the power of God that is poured out in the clay jars. This is the power of God that Found out in the clay jars. You know, are we causing people to see the treasure we carry, or are we causing people to look at the jar? Because that metaphor Apostle Paul presented that the power of God is presented in the jars of clay. Do we draw attention to ourselves, or do we draw attention to the treasure? We must have the glory to be directed to God and never to ourselves. Are we more concerned about protecting our clay jar or protecting the treasure that is poured out into this clay jar? I believe too often we are willing to discard the treasure to protect this body that is our clay jar, our earth and vessel. But this clay jar is not important. You are a clay jar with a purpose. 
protect the treasure and show the treasure to the world. If we fail this in this purpose, then we have failed God who gave us this purpose. Dear people of God, we will face trials and tests in our Christian life. We will be hard pressed, perplexed, persecuted and struck down. But we will not be crushed. We will not be in despair. We will not be forsaken and we will not be destroyed. Our earthen vessel might lose its color. Our earthen vessel may lose its shape. It may even get cracks on it. But remember, there's a treasure that is hidden in this cracked jars of clay, which the world cannot see. It is the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. It is a surpassing power that survives us till the end of our Christian life. That is the power of God that helps us in our Christian life. So the second uh, uh, the aspect, or the second aspect uh, that helps a child of God in the midst of our uh, affliction is, is the, the power of resurrection. In verse uh, 14, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and presents us with you in his presence. And uh, the first apostle calls it that, the power of God that poured out in our earthen vessel that sustains us. And second thing that helps a child of God to move in the midst of all this affliction and hardship, that is the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. In verse 14, Apostle Paul affirms that we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with the Jesus. The one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with the Jesus. When you study up, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, Apostle Paul is refuting the arguments of uh, the people, those who did not believe in the resurrection. And there, Apostle Paul is saying that if Christ is not raised, then our preaching is in vain, your faith also in vain. And God raised Jesus Christ as the first fruit from the dead. And the Spirit of God who lives and dwells in, in anyone, God will raise him also from the dead. And in uh, uh, 1522 of 1 Corinthians, Paul is saying that in a moment, the tingling of an eye, the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. That is a glorious hope of a Christian. That is a glorious hope each one of us have. Because when we hear the sound of the trumpet, the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, and the mortal with immortality. The Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24, Apostle John is saying, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now, the raising from the dead is almost like that of a seed that germinates. When a seed that falls into the ground, it gets the right moisture and uh, um, the, the right water and the atmosphere. The seed that falls into the ground and it germinates. When the seed dies, the life comes out of it. When the seed dies, the life, life comes out of it. It is almost like that. A new life is coming from that death. So here Apostle Paul is saying that this is the glorious hope a Christian who has in the Lord. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with the Jesus and presents us with you in his presence. We know that the last seven, eight months around the world, lakhs of people died because of COVID. Many Christians, many believing Christians, many pastors, many of them died. And many of them did not have a proper funeral service as we used to do before. Many people are worried about it. My brethren, whatever may happen, 
whatever may happen to us as we depart from this world there is a glorious hope that we have and that glorious hope will help us to go further into this uh, our christian faith apostle paul says that the body is so imperishable in first corinthians chapter 15 it is raised in perishable it is shown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is shown in weakness raised in power it's on a natural body it is raised a spiritual body therefore my dear people of god whatever may happen to our physical body we do not lose heart we may undergo struggles because of sickness lakhs of people around the world died because of covid and most of them did not get a proper funeral and many pastors and believing christians died because of covid and they were the read by someone or we may undergo persecution and may die by the hands of the persecutors and even our dead bodies may not buried properly but even in the midst of all these uncertainties there is a glorious hope that is waiting for us that hope is the trumpet will sound and all those who dead in christ will be raised imperishable the mortal with the mortality and we will be with the lord forever and this is the greatest hope that survives a minister or a servant of god a child of god in the midst of afflictions and thirdly and in verse 16 apostle paul is saying that a hope of a child of god is the process of renewing the hope of a child of god is the process of renewing verse 16 therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day so the police saying that we are being renewed day by day you know when you look into this particular uh, renewal let me narrate the life cycle of a butterfly you all know very well but let me just uh, present it the life cycle of a butterfly the butterfly lays its egg on the leaf of a tiny plant now for a few days this tiny egg you know from this tiny egg the larva or the caterpillar comes out it's a very small worm like creature it eats the tender leaves very fast and it grows very fast now for a few days this caterpillar change into an another stage and the caterpillar caterpillar becoming a pupa and uh, it will be there in the cocoon for a few days while this caterpillar is there in the cocoon or in the pupal stage the wings and the legs develops at the time of its maturity it will break the cocoon it shelter and comes out as a beautiful butterfly but as it uh, this process you know happening to this butterfly someone may ask a question hey caterpillar hey worm like creature hey this is what your life is you live all through your life as a worm as a uh, caterpillar and this is what your life you end your life with this but this tiny creature has something special to say to that particular person a man you may be seeing now as a caterpillar as a worm like creature but i have something else to say to you i will sit inside the cocoon but at the time of maturity i will break this cocoon and i will come out as a beautiful butterfly hey this is almost the same like a person who is waiting in the presence of the lord the power of a christian a power of a child of god as we just uh, read from verse 16 that therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are being wasting away but inwardly we are being renewed day by day it's a renewal this renewal is the strength of a minister or a strength of a child of god and it will keep us to move in the midst of struggles 
And this renewal is very, very important in the life of a, a child of God. It's very important. We may face at different stages of our lives. We may undergo different challenges in our lives. When we face all these challenges and difficulties in our lives, we need to wait in the presence of the Lord to renew our spiritual life. Spiritual life with this renewal only, we can move further day by day into the uh, in, into our Christian life. Isaiah chapter forty verse thirty one is one of the very familiar passages that we all know. It says that those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not to weary. They shall walk, not to be faint. Here the prophet affirms that only those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. When we wait in the Lord, even though our outer nature is wasting away, yet our inner nature will be renewed day by day. It's a glorious renewal. Now there, uh, Apostle, uh, you know, the, the prophet is saying that those who wait in the presence of the Lord will renew their strength. My dear brethren, when we face all these struggles in our lives, how much time you will spend in the presence of God? Are we taking it seriously to spend time in the presence of God and waiting in the presence of the Lord so that we may renew our Christian experience. We may renew our life so that we may move further. When we face the struggles and difficulties and pains and hardship and all the, the pressures that come to us, are we spending in the spending our time in the presence of the Lord so that we may renew our spiritual life? It's very important in the life of a Christian. Of course, the power of God that helps a, a child of God. This power of God, the glory of the gospel of Christ is put in the clay jars. And because of the power of God, we are not uh, perplexed. We are not destroyed. We are not abandoned. We are not forsaken. Because this power of God is poured out into the clay jars. And second thing, the power of resurrection. God raised Lord Jesus Christ as the first proof. And the spirit that helps us to raise from the dead, whatever may happen to our physical body, we need to keep the treasure that poured out in the jars of clay. That's what's very important. And thirdly, the process of renewing. And fourthly, the promise of eternal glory. Verse 17. <clears throat> Verse 17. Please go to the, the previous slide. Uh, the previous one. Okay, that's one. And fourthly, the, the hope of a Christian is the promise of eternal glory, verse 17 and 18. For our, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. Here, what Apostle Paul is saying, our light and momentary troubles achieving us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The light and momentary troubles. Here, when Apostle Paul says that, the light and the momentary trouble it does not mean that the trouble that we face in our lives is last only for a few minutes, few days, few weeks, few months, few years. You know, it's not. The trouble that we face in our lives, maximum it can prolong for a lifetime. That's all. According to Psalm 19, God's servant Moses' son, our life in this earth may be 70 years or 80 years. That's all the trouble that we can have in our lives. 
That's the trouble that we have. Our afflictions are light when we come birth to eternal glory. Our afflictions are momentary. When we say, when we see about as uh, momentary and light. You know, when Apostle Paul is saying that it is light, meaning he is presenting a, a scale, a balance before the child of God. All the troubles of our lives, all the pain, all the agony, all the pressure, all the difficulties, all our problems, we place it in one side of this balance. And if we keep eternity on the other side, we feel that all the troubles of our lives is light. But if you don't have that eternity on the other side of the balance, we feel that it is so difficult. It is so painful. I cannot bear it. It is so heavy all through my life, every day, every month, every year, I face all these struggles. But if you keep eternity on the other side of the balance, we can say that, Lord, comparing with eternity, the trouble that I am facing is so light. Many times our problem is, we see the things what is seen with our naked eyes. We are not able to see what is unseen. The Bible very clearly says that, what we see with our naked eye is temporary, but what is unseen is uh, eternal. And another thing what uh, Apostle Paul is saying that our, our, our afflictions are momentary. Our afflictions are momentary, comparing with the eternity that is placed before a child of God. Now, when Apostle Paul says that our affliction is momentary, it does not mean that it lasts only for a few minutes, few weeks, few months, or a few years. And Paul says that our suffering is momentary. He means that it lasts only a lifetime. And of course, a lifetime is only a momentary comparing with eternity. Am I talking something metaphysical here? No. It is the glorious hope of a Christian. It is the glorious hope of a child of God. It is this glorious hope the word of God is teaching his children. The promise of eternal glory sustains a child of God. And in verse 18, when we read, it reads that the minister's eyes are not focused on physical and temporal, but on spiritual and eternal. The word fix in Greek presents that focus one's eyes on a set to goal. Focusing our eye on a set to goal. It's almost like uh, when we take a picture, you know, we focus the camera. We focus the camera properly and without shaking when you click it, we will get the right, perfect, clear picture. You know, the word here it is saying that scopio, which means focusing one's eyes on a set to goal. What is the set to goal of a child of God? Of course, our goal is Goal is spending eternity with God. A child of God does not look at the things which are seen, physical and corruptible, but the things which are unseen, spiritual and incorruptible. The reason for this is very clear. The things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When we compare the eternal glory with earthly things, we see that earthly things that we see around us become very small and light. From this passage, we have seen four things that survives a child of God. The power of God, the power of resurrection, the process of renewing, and the promise of eternal glory. I know that many of us have gone through one or other kinds of afflictions in our lives. No one in this world can say that I don't have any problem. We all have one affliction or the other, one kind of problem or the other. This morning, there might be at least a few of you who have thought to quit at some moments of your life because of the afflictions or the problems or the issues. But it is the power of God that survives us. That's what the Bible teaches. It is the power of resurrection that survives us. It is a process of renewing that survives us. 
It is the promise of eternal glory that help us to move forward. Even if in this uh, a COVID situation, as we live, we may have different struggles in our lives. We may face with uh, different problems. Lacks of people around the world lost to their businesses. Lacks of people around the world lost their job, their income, and their livelihood. But in the midst of all these troubles, a child of God can very well say that the power of God that is poured out in this earthen vessel that helped me to move further. What are we showing to the world? Are we showing our earthen vessel? Are we decorating our earthen vessel? Or are we presenting to the world the precious, the glorious gospel of Christ that is poured out into our earthen vessel? It is our responsibility to show to the world the power of God that is poured out into the earthen vessel that help us to move forward in this, in this journey, in this world. You know, my pe dear people of God, this momentary pain and suffering that we undergo today will vanish soon. After all, we are not permanent citizens of this earth. We are sojourners. It is because of this eternal glory, thousands and thousands laid their life for Jesus. It was this eternal glory that sustained them in the midst of all afflictions and hardship and pain. They compared their momentary pain with the promise of eternal glory. Thus, with the Apostle Paul, let us also confidently say that we do not lose heart. Whatever may come in our lives, because of our Lord is with us, the Holy Spirit is with us, Christ Jesus is with us, and he is holding us every moment of our lives because, because he said, I will be with you always. My dear brother, brothers and sisters, whatever the trouble that we may face, but we need to remember the power of God will help us. The, you know, the power of the resurrection that will help us. The process of renewing and the promise of eternal glory will help a child of God. May God help each one of us to face all these struggles and victoriously comes out with all these promises. May God bless each one of you. Thank you for inviting me to share in this media. Thank you. May God bless you.